Civil War, Harriet Tubman, Part 2. The summer air was hot and heavy. There was no breeze to cut the heat, and the shade of scraggly bushes did little to block the blazing sun. Gnats, mosquitoes, and flies swarmed all around, buzzing and biting. Despite the heat and bugs, the runaway slaves, filthy from head to toe, their clothes tattered and shredded by thorns and branches, their bare feet blistered and cut, slept hard, huddled together in the tall grass. As they slept, a woman, a conductor, watched and guarded over them. Even now, as they slept deeply in the bushes, this woman sat upright and alert, her sharp eyes scanning the forest and her ears listening for signs of danger. She knew the dangers all too well. Slave catchers were always searching for runaway slaves, lurking in the middle of swamps, hunting for runaways miles away from the nearest house, town, or road, and hoping to catch groups of runaway slaves. The slave catchers were paid great sums of money if they caught runaway slaves, and this woman knew very well that the slave catchers would never give up. This woman who stood guard over everyone else was Minty, the same Minty who used to sit by the crib hoping the plantation owner's baby would not cry. But people did not call her Minty anymore. People now called her Harriet, Harriet Tubman. When she grew up, Harriet Tubman did not serve in the big house. Perhaps this was because the plantation owner sensed that she was a bit rebellious. She always did things her own way. So from the time she was a young woman, she was sent to work in the fields, plowing and digging, cutting hay and tobacco and chopping wood. In time, she became as strong and tough as a person could be. When the plantation owner died, Harriet Tubman faced a new danger. It was likely that she, she would be sent off to Georgia just like her sister. Georgia was in the deep south where many of the plantations grew cotton and conditions were even worse for enslaved Africans. Work on the cotton plantations was difficult and performed in all types of weather. They plowed the fields with teams of mules, hoed the soil to get rid of weeds and harvested the cotton by hand. The cotton had to be picked clean and then made into heavy bales so that it could be transported away from the plantation and sold. Harriet knew she had to run away from her life of slavery. In order to reach freedom, Harriet Tubman needed to use the Underground Railroad. This was not a real railroad. It was a system of secret routes and hiding places to help enslaved people escape from slavery in the South to freedom in the north. If only there had been a real railroad to freedom, then escaping would have been easy for Harriet Tubman and other runaway slaves. They could have hopped aboard any train and ridden away from the punishments, endless work, and sorrows of a harsh life. In certain ways, the Underground Railroad was like a real railroad. On a real train, there are passengers or people who travel from one place to another. Runaway slaves on the Underground Railroad were also known as passengers, and as soon as they ran away from the plantation, they set off on an incredible and difficult journey to freedom. But runaways could not complete this journey without help from a conductor. On a real railroad, a conductor is in charge of the train. On the Underground Railroad, a conductor guided runaway slaves, leading them through secret paths and taking them to safe houses. These safe houses were known as stations, and like real train stations, they were places where passengers could rest before moving on to the next part of the journey. Many different people provided these stations to escaping slaves, people from both the North and the South who knew slavery was wrong, and even some former enslaved Africans who had won their freedom and wanted to help others. Harriet Tubman made it safely to freedom in the north using the Underground Railroad. Enslaved Africans like Harriet were free in northern states like Pennsylvania, where slavery was not allowed. But they weren't entirely safe until they left the United States and entered the land north of the United States. This was because the laws allowed slave catchers to enter free states in the north to catch runaway slaves 
and return them to a life of slavery in the South. Harriet did not stay in Pennsylvania for long. She missed her family and friends and could not bear the thought of them remaining in slavery while she enjoyed a free new life. She decided she had important contributions to make to help those who were still enslaved. So she became a conductor on the Underground Railroad and returned to the South 19 more times over several years, risking her life each time to help other enslaved Africans escape to freedom. Harriet Tubman soon became one of the bravest and most famous conductors on the Underground Railroad. Her name became well known among the supporters of slavery. Plantation owners put rich rewards out for her capture. Within a few years, they wanted her stopped at all costs, but she kept going back again and again, helping more and more slaves escape. Harriet was startled by the distant sound of dogs barking, and she knew danger was near. Wake up now, wake up, she urged, shaking the men and women. Gather up these babies. We've got to get a move on. The men and women sprang to their feet with fear and panic. Don't you worry now, she assured them. I know a station not too far from here, but we'll have to move fast, and we'll have to stay in the creek to keep those dogs off the trail. They hustled out of the swamp and splashed up the creek where the dogs would have a hard time following their scent. An hour later, soaked in sweat and muddy creek water, they arrived in the front yard of a small farmhouse. The runaway slaves hid in the weeds while Harriet Tubman slipped through the yard and onto the front porch. She tapped three times on the door, waited a moment, and then tapped two more times. This was a secret knock so that the people in the house would know their visitor was an underground railroad conductor in need of help. A white woman opened the door. She signaled for the runaways to follow her into the chicken coop. There, she lifted a trap door in the floor, revealing a dark hole. It's not comfortable, she told them, but nobody will find you here. I have some stew and biscuits inside and some fresh milk. I'll bring it out as soon as the coast is clear. Their hearts raced as they waited in their hideout, expecting to hear the slave catcher's dogs barking any minute. But the dogs never came. Running through the creek had thrown the slave catchers off the trail, and for now, the runaways were safe. They wanted to sleep, but when the sun went down, they had to move on again. There was no time to waste, for nighttime was the only safe time to travel. Outside, Harriet Tubman looked up to the starry sky. She put her arm around one of the children. See there, she said, pointing upward. That group of stars up there, it kind of looks like a ladle you might use to scoop water from a bucket. Back where I'm from, we used to call it a drinking gourd. Do you see it? I think so, the child said. Now, see the cup of that drinking gourd, Harriet Tubman asked. Look at those two stars at the end of the cup and pretend you can draw a straight line from those two stars straight out into space. If you follow that line straight out, you will find the North Star. It is always there, right in the same spot, and you can always find it if you know how to find the drinking gourd in the sky. Do you know why that star is so important? Why? the child asked. Because the North Star is always to the north. If we follow the North Star every night and keep it in front of us, then it will guide us north to freedom. And heading to the north into freedom is exactly what they did.